My first book that I remember reading, <laughs> I, I actually go and tell kids this story of uh, the little chicken that says, are you my mother? <laughs> and ironically enough, uh, growing up, uh, that being that the first sort of book of memory, it, it's sort of ironic considering that I grew up without a mother and I felt like I related to that little chick so deeply, <laughs> even at a very young age. I, I would literally latch on to any female adult and sort of have my heart open and say, are you my mother? Will you be my mother? And so that little chick that runs around the, the farmyard looking for her mother and not actually understanding that you know, your mother is someone that sort of looks like you, but a little bit older, but she runs around and asks the cow and the pig and, and the lamb, and they're all like, I'm not your mother. And, and so finally she does find her mother. So my hope and my dream was that I would always find my mom too, which is sort of ironic when you think about it. But then I grew a little bit older and then it went right to C.S. Lewis. The Chronicles of Narnia, of course, and those took me on adventures in my head that I got to go to places and, and feel things and envision things with Aslan, the last battle, the, all the different books in that, and my father would actually read them to me every night. And then once we were finished that, we went on to The Hobbit with J.R.R. Tolkien. And as soon as we finished that, then we moved right on to The Lord of the Rings. I think I was still under 10 years old. and and my father and I crying when we thought that Frodo had passed away because Shelob had bit him and, and poor Sam had to take the ring and travel by himself and both of us were in tears reading that section. And I actually reread those books for Richard when he was growing up because I felt that it was so important for him to have those memories as well, to be able to, to dream beyond just what we are here on this world. It, it allows you a place to create imagination. It allows you a, a place to, to visit other places. And if somebody has the ability to do that for you, it could inspire you to do it for others. We started in 2009 to create uh, the Mi'kmaq Legends group, and then it sort of evolved into the Mi'kmaq Heritage Actors. But I remember when we first started, the kids were so nervous to be performing in front of a non-Indigenous audience because they thought, they would tell me like, what if they laugh at us? What if they don't like what we're doing? If they don't like what we're sharing? What if they don't accept us for who we are? Or, you know, worse, we get booed off the stage. Like, they just didn't know and it made them so nervous. And over time and all of the different shows that we have done since, they have such pride now that if you do get an audience that might not be connecting with the story as well it's okay because we're still there with our our hearts open our hands outspread and sharing who we are in the best way that we can and with pride <laughs>